and I, I'm still really interested in getting more people to do this because it, it just works so well. And I know how horrific it feels to be trapped with chronic illness as well. It was literally every breath felt like I wasn't getting nearly enough, enough oxygen into my body. That's what it felt like. And I, as a result, started taking harder and bigger breaths, which the more I did that, the worse it got. Obviously, because I knew nothing about breath, breath physiology, I thought that in order not to die, I just had to do that. Yeah, when I first started doing the method, I went through this initial kind of ecstatic burst of like, oh my God, I'm free of the cage that I've been living in for so long. In 2008, my symptoms were a little bit better than they had been because I'd learned to make sure I was nasal breathing every morning and reducing my breathing. And that had definitely helped, but it had in no way reversed my tendency towards feeling like I didn't have enough oxygen. But there was something in me that knew that the nose breathing had changed something. So when I found a book in the bookshop, which was when I was at a particularly bad point again in my breathing, I bought it, it was about a pound or something, and started doing the exercise a couple of times a day. But the dramatic difference when I actually did the course was just so, so huge that looking back on the difference I made myself now, it was tiny. If anyone's kind of in two minds about can I teach myself or should I do the course, I definitely recommend that you do. The amount of money I paid for it was hardly anything compared to the, to the benefits I got. As I said, it was like getting out of prison. So I definitely recommend you do it. And if you carry on, if you do it consistently, it will work. It was within a week of, or maybe even days of doing the proper method that the main symptom of the breathlessness went. I had other symptoms as well, which had come on, on top of what had gone on, like IBS, not being able to digest anything, chronic fatigue. That went, re the kind of like large part of that went quite quickly. And so did the digestion issues. The mental stuff, I think, takes longer to get rid of. It wasn't so much anxiety, but tendencies to kind of think in illogical ways. Not that it's not an ongoing <laughs> war job. <laughs> Before Bateko, I wasn't really able to do much more than work, maybe a couple of days a week, and the rest of the time I'd spend distracting myself from how bad I was feeling. It was, it was just overwhelming mentally and physically to have demands on me at that point. But now I can work like looking after horses taking out autistic people with horses me leading horses so it's obviously a huge amount of walking uh cleaning out fields which is pushing wheelbarrows full of horse manure everywhere which is you know intense physical work and that's in winter <laughs> so in terms of what i can do is it's dramatically bigger waking up at sort of half six in the morning go to bed at midnight and also starting my own hula hoop teaching business and that's going really well that's been an amazing way of using physical exercise as a way of developing my potato practice because at the higher levels you have to use physical exercise really to get it to get your control pause higher so i'd use it to do maximum pauses sort of quickly in the midst of days when i'd be spending a lot of time on the computer i could just spend 10 minutes hula hooping and using that as a potato practice doing very shallow breathing and holding my nose during it as well. I also was part of a really big campaign against a fracking well in Balkham and I was the media liaison representative for that campaign so I was doing a huge amount of public speaking to national and international media. I had one hour long debate on BBC Stoke with the head of the UK onshore gas, what they called UK UG, it's basically the, the head of the fracking industry in the UK. It was just me and him having a debate for an hour and that I'd have never been able to do that before and stay calm. And I could keep myself calm in those situations by making sure I was breathing properly before. There's been a lot of people that I've brought to start practicing Boteco. I know the practice works so clearly from my own experience. I'm also interested in developing it for animals and I'm already doing the method with horses because someone else has developed a way to do that. Now I'm riding a horse who no one else has ever been able to ride before for some reason. And I don't know why that is, but I'm sure it's both my breathing having an effect on him and also the fact that I can feel clearly what's going on for him and respond to that.
So I've noticed since I've been doing the Botaco method and particularly since my control cause has been over 30 for a long time, I've been a lot less worried about what other people are thinking of me. It's not so much I'm not worried about it, it's more like I don't really think about that. Not that I'm not sensitive to other people's feelings, I'd say I'm actually a lot more empathic than I used to be. So it's like you get a much more truthful perception of what's around you in terms of all the senses. And I'm sure that's because Botaco clears the slate mentally so you can actually feel what's going on. For pretty much the whole of my childhood, I was like, absolutely loved horses. And when I started doing the method, I would have never imagined that I'd have gone back to that or found a way to go back to that. And when I started doing the method, or like my symptoms at that point would have made being around horses completely dangerous if I look at it from my perspective now, because I wouldn't have been able to read them because I've been, I'd have been too wrapped up in my own emotions and my own physical disturbances. In terms of the cleansing reactions I had, the, clen the headaches were the worst thing that I remember having. I also had chest pains at times and really bad stomach ache, but the headaches were definitely the worst. I just remember like in the middle of the night, waking up feeling like my head was going to explode. And, but obviously if, if a load of toxin is going to come out of your body, toxins cause headaches. And it was basically my body discharging that as far as I understand anyway. And I haven't had any of those since, headaches like that. That was very specifically in the first period of intense potato practice. A couple of years after, I had a lot of kind of old trauma sort of come up that needed to be sort of discharged from my kind of system. And that was hard, but I was able to kind of watch it rather than be in it, if that makes sense. In Lambertaco, we were incredibly supportive. I don't think without that support, I'd have been able to get my control balls to where it is now and get my symptoms to disappear like they have. Because when you're doing the method properly, you pretty much will have cleansing reactions, which is the body's way of healing itself. And you need support through those if they're of, they're of any severity. And mostly you'll have a couple of ones that you'll need somebody to, to let you know what's going on with your body because they can be frightening but it's the only way you can heal. There are a couple of times where it was like, do I call the hospital or do I call, do I call Martha? Like in the middle of the night and I'm still here. So obviously calling Martha was the right thing. <laughs>